Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Zao Survival. It's now episode 2, season 2. I've got a whole lot of stuff to do this episode. Some basic Minecraft stuff and I think we might just be able to squeeze in the exhibit. So stick around for that. First of all, I'm just going to tell you some of the stuff that we've already done. Because in the live stream or the first episode, depending on when you watched it, we found this incredible savanna where we've set up base and are hopefully going to do some cool builds and build an amazing zoo. So I hope you'll stick around for the entire series to see that be built. We have our shulker wall, we have our furnaces, smokers, all the regular Minecraft stuff. Then we have these work tables. Then we also have some just other workstations, such as our anvil and our loom. And of course, we can't forget the nether portal. Now, one of the things that I have done related to the zoo is build this amazing bridge, which I think turned out really nicely. So I think, straight off into the episode, let's just jump into a time lapse and I'll show you how I built it. Okay, let's go! Spyro for leaving the message. Now that I've shown you how I built the bridge, there are some regular Minecraft stuff that we've got to get done first. And one of those things is to build a starter base. And to be honest, I don't think this little area counts as a starter base quite yet. I have some plans and I think they're going to turn out really well. So let me just tell you what I'm thinking. So what I'm thinking for our starter base is to sort of turn this peninsula of this hill into our base. It's sort of going to look like a wooden, modern house, if that makes any sense. And I think it's going to turn out looking quite good. So let me just get some resources and then we can start building. Now, I've got to made a lot of concrete. And I mean a lot of concrete. We've got white concrete, light grey concrete and just regular grey concrete. I'm also in a bit of a pickle because I need to find a type of wood that will match them really nicely. The only problem is, there's so many different types of wood. I really want to have like a nice dark shade of wood, which will match it really well. The only problem is there's like seven different types of dark wood. So I think I'll just go off and try and find some wood that will match the concrete really nicely. So I'll just go do that. We also have a chest over here. Labelled to us. What's inside, that's the question. Oh, a book by Spyroplay. If you want, you can pause the video and read this. And it's from Spyro and Soul. Thank you so much Spyro and Soul for the message. I definitely will consider the deal. If I need any materials or anything like that in the near future. So, thank you for the offer. Now, I guess I'll go and try and find some wood that'll match the concrete really nicely. So this is the block palette that we've picked out. Looks really, really nice. Got this really nice jacaranda wood, which I think looks just really good with the whole block palette. We've got some concrete, some planks, some smooth stone, and I just think it looks really nice. So let's put it up on the build and see what it looks like. So I think it's time to just jump into a time lapse. Let's go! And I think that's looking amazing. 
I really love how it's come out. Now, you may notice that there's literally nothing behind me, and that's because I've moved every single thing into the new starter base. And you've actually missed quite a bit, because I accidentally didn't record my voice when I was actually building the interior of it. So unfortunately you've missed out on that, but I'll give you a tour around and show you what I've done. I will move this nether portal by the way, don't worry. So I think just the best thing to do is to get up there and have a look around the inside. Now inside, there's a lot to take in, so I think I'll just break it down for you bit by bit. First of all, we have this seating area. Not very practical, but it's a nice decorative touch. Got some potted plants, some bookshelves, lots of leaves that brings this nice lush sense into the build. Over here we have our shelves with all our chipped workbenches. Got the botanist, the glass blower, the mason's table and the carpenters. We've got another two spaces where we can place more, and that'll be good. Here we have our storage system with our utility workbenches. We also have our wall of empty shulkers now, because I've transferred all the items into this one chest wall. Which is pretty good, nicely organised, and I think it's just turned out really nice this whole area. Now, through here is the bedroom. So, obviously we have our bed, we've got this nice big window looking out, got some divider walls, and of course, you can't forget a wardrobe. And in here, we have some spare diamond armour, I am going to put some tools in these barrels up here, but not now. And we also have an elytra, which I managed to get. Now, some people who watched the live stream might have noticed that I had an elytra then. And the only problem is, I died and lost it. And it's a great thing now, because we have an elytra. So, let's just put it on. And this feels so much better now. The only problem is, we don't have rockets. So, That'll be something I grind for off camera. But for now, there is something I need to do, and that is that we have a lot of crate keys. So, we're just here at the crate warp, so I think we might try our luck in the vote crate. So, let's see how we do. First of all, some carnivore kibble, I think. Yes, some carnivore kibble. Then we've got some insectivore kibble. Some amatrine horse armor. Very nice. A vote hoe. K more carnivore kibble. Insectivore kibble, I think. No. Herbivore kibble. And shellfish kibble. So, not too much good stuff, though we've got a lot of kibble. And some amatrine horse armour, which, which is always a bonus. So, this is the spawn of the zoo, and it's absolutely incredible. Zavira did a really, really good job on it, but I think it's probably back to the base. So, let's just get back there. And we are back at our base. I swear that we have too many giraffes in this area. Big cluster there, another big cluster there, and there's an even bigger cluster here. We have a giraffe problem. But I did get a bit sidetracked on the way home. First of all, you may have noticed that I've got some rockets, got a few more, bought some gunpowder, all that stuff so that we can now use our elytra properly. And I'm not a gambling person myself, but on the way back I may have gone to a casino and spent quite a bit of my money. But it wasn't all losses, we did manage to get this netherite ingot. So I think we might try and upgrade one of our diamond pieces. And I think we're going to upgrade the helmet first. So, let's just pop this into the smithing table. And here we go! A very snazzy netherite helmet! Now, just ignore all the giraffes in the back, we might have to sort that out at some point. But if you remember, to the start of the episode, I did say that we might get on to making our first ever exhibit in this zoo. So, that's what we're gonna do now! And the first exhibit that we're gonna make... Drum roll. Oh, not a tree. We didn't want to crash into a tree. And that first ex- Please! Stop interrupting me! I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the giraffes. But the first ever exhibit we're gonna make in this zoo is the flamingo exhibit! So, hopefully you're all excited, 
And this is where it's going to be. This red outline of netherrack. So, this is where the flamingo exhibit's going to be. So, let me just tell you my plans for it. Jeez, can giraffes please just stop spawning? Oh, and there's some African wild dogs. So, for this flamingo exhibit, it's going to be pretty simple. We won't actually have to do much because this area is already looking really nice for the flamingo exhibit. I think I'm going to turn this edge into a sort of beach, which is going to look really nice. We can put some regular sand and coarse dirt and some plants around the outside edge. Then on the back wall, I'm thinking we're going to turn this into like a craggy, cliffy area with some paths along the top. And we can also have a lower viewing area with some windows in so you can look at it from that side. And then we're just going to have some paths around the outside, some fences in between the exhibit and the path. And I think it'll look really, really nice. But I think the first thing that we need to do is get the crag on the back wall finished. So, I guess that means I've probably got to go down into the mines and just collect some regular different types of stone. Some regular stone, some cobblestone, and maybe even some andesite. And then we can start working on that back craggy wall. So, I guess that means I should probably get down into the mines. So, with some of the vanilla blocks and some of the modded blocks, I've come up with this really nice tone gradient from like super coarse stone all the way down to just like the regular stone. So we've got some regular cobblestone, got some... I'm not even sure what this is called, let me just check in the chest. Rocky stone, andesite, and some regular stone. So I think this will look really nice. So I think I'll probably just get started on this crag and to be honest, just see how it goes. I have to be honest, I'm not good at terraforming, so this might be a bit of a challenge. But let's just see how it goes. Okay, I'll do a bit, come back, tell you how it went, and then we'll probably just continue on with the rest of it. That's the first layer done, the stone layer. Now we've got to move on to the andesite. And I think the andesite will just be some like small pockets in behind it, and then maybe just mix it into the front a bit. And that is the andesite layer now in. I kind of want to curve the cliff back a bit, to make a bit of an overhang, which I think will look really nice. So, I think it's now onto the rocky stone. Now, this is what it's looking like now with the rocky stone. I've tried to bring in a bit of that overhang, but we'll definitely accentuate that with the cobblestone. So, I guess that's the next part, the cobblestone. And then, that'll be pretty much that craggy wall all finished up. Now, I have to say that that is one very nice looking crag. And I've just seen a missing block. I'm gonna go fix that, but also, I kinda wanna smooth out some of these sharp edges with just some stairs and slabs, just to make it look a bit better. And then, we can put the walkway on top, put some fences in, and I think it'll look very, very nice. Now, I have to admit that this took me a lot longer than I was thinking it would, but I really like how it's turned out. I really just like the style of it, with the windows in the bottom and the railings on the top. So, let's just fly over there and check it out. So, we've got a couple of entrances. One into the underground area, where we've got our nice windows. All nicely decorated as a cave. We have three windows in here, and this is going to be decorated with some plants, some benches, some pictures, that sort of stuff. Now, if we come out the back, we can come up these stairs, and this leads us onto the top viewing platform where we've got these really nice rope fences from the Zawa mod pack allowing us just to look out over. They are a bit tall, but you can see over them. And yeah, that's what it's looking like, and I really like how it's come out. So, it's already getting quite late in the episode, so I think we should probably make a start on the actual exhibit area. I know that underneath the cave isn't quite finished yet with the finer details, but I think we should probably just get to work on making the paths around the outside and putting in the fences. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to put in the fences and then we'll come back and then we'll put in the paths. Sound good? Okay, let's go. And this is now looking very nice from the top of our balcony. I really like how it's come out. I placed some like stone pillars periodically around the fence and I think it's really just brought it all together. Now we have to link up these stairs and the paths all the way around and I think we might also link it up to the bridge over there which will be very very good for access. 
So, I guess my shovel's gonna get some good use now. Okay, I'll be back when I've got all the paths in. If this tarantula doesn't kill me first. Now, the path is in all the way round. I've also put in some of these small rocks with some leaves. As well as putting some leaves on the rock face. I just think it looks really nice. So yep, we've got the path all the way round. And it's also round on the other side as well, linking these stairs to the entrance of the tunnel. However, I haven't finished off here, slightly, and we also need to put some rocks and leaves and stuff like that in to decorate it. But we won't do that now, as it's already taken a whole lot of time to get this episode out, and I really want, just want to get the flamingo exhibit done. So, that's what we're going to do. And mind you, these paths are not final. They might change depending on what type of theme we're going for this zoo. So, these might change in the future, but for now, I think they look pretty good. Now, for the next part, I just want to thicken this sand border around the lake. I think that'll just look really nice, and it'll just give a bit of definition to the lake. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add some blocks around the lake, a bit like this, and hopefully it'll look nice when we're done. This looks good now. I added some slabs, some stairs, just to give it a bit more detail on the top. And I've also dug it down and added some slabs and stairs, just to vary the landscape a bit. But I don't like how many of these floating plants there are, so I'm just going to remove about half of them, and then see what it looks like. Now this is looking a lot better with fewer of these floating plants, but before we do any vegetation on the land, I do want to make a few small trees, using a mixture of fences, which I think will look nice. And some of these branches that are in the Zawa mod pack. You can use them a bit like this, and sort of just, they link together really nicely. So you can make some really detailed trees using these, which just looks so good. And then obviously you can add the leaves, just like so. And there you have a really nice looking small tree. So I think I might put another two round the outside of here, and then we can get in and just place some regular leaves around, place some plants, that sort of stuff. So I'll go build another couple of these trees. And now I think this is looking really incredible. I just love how it's turned out. We've got all the vegetation in, we've even got some enrichment items, these little sprinklers. Over there we've also got a couple of food bowls, stuff like that. Really just bring the place to life and will be really good for when we get the flamingos in which is actually what I have in these nets right now. So, let's just put them in. Just put them over on this sandy beach. Now, at this point in time, I will actually have to take these out because we don't actually have any food for them. So that's something that we've got to sort out. But at this point, I think these are just looking really good in their new exhibit. But yep, the food problem will be sorted in the next episode, as hopefully we're going to make some epic farms in the next episode. Well, maybe not epic like you see on some YouTube videos, like absolutely massive. But we'll get some farms that will supply us with materials for, I guess, the rest of the series. But we've finished the exhibit, got the flamingos in. So, I guess it's time to end the episode. Don't you think, Mr. Flamingo? Okay, everyone, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Hope you're excited, and that flamingo's just got out. I'll sort that. Okay, everybody, see you in the next one. Bye!